Welcome to tonight's show. You're with Tom Brown and Steve, and we are NRL from the sidelines. Um, sadly, our friend Tom isn't with us today, but Brian, you're here. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic, Steve. Very good, and we're going to have a great show without Tom anyway, right? Well, we are, because Tom Tom's actually out hobnobbing with the roosters. I actually hear it's a hobnobbing. I actually hear it's a members' night. They've got 400 people. <laughs> That's almost... Full membership for the Roosters. I mean, they have what five hundred members, so that's not bad. That's going. That's good going. I mean, oh, you're a harsh man, but that was good. But I got to tell you, I think I'm missing Tom's presence right now. So I thought, okay, yeah, I'm missing Tom a little bit too. So how about we bring young Tom into it? <laughs> Just for for all those who don't know, this is Tom. So tonight, this is going to be Tom. And Tom, I'm sorry, I couldn't find anything else to dress you in. Um, short of maybe a Barbie doll or something, but I didn't think that would be appropriate. So I thought this would be appropriate to just make us feel like we're the three together again. Very uh, muscly there, Tom. Yes, and a few tattoos I don't think Tom would normally have. No. Okay, so what we do every week is we talk about the NRL rounds and we are just at the conclusion now of round two and Brian, Mm. amazing results. Oh, some, some doozy upsets, yeah. I mean, we some, some of the, I know we'll get to it later, but but the Tigers beating Melbourne. Wow. Nobody would have put. Wow. That down. I mean, nobody would have guessed it. No. I oh, mind you, I was talking to uh, my local butcher who happened to fling a lazy ten on the Tigers, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Why did you have ten dollars to part with?" <laughs> <laughs> and I don't much, know. How much did you get back? Uh, she. She. She got uh, two hundred and fifty back. <laughs> From the ten dollars, we should have all had a had a lazy ten on the tigers. Wow, that's impressive. All right, let's talk. So, should we leave Tom here, or do you think we can? Oh, we can leave him there for leave, a little while. Leave, well, how about we just put him up here, and he can he can just be part of the show, huh? Yeah. Okay. Because we miss you, Tom. We miss you, Tom. Are you ready? I'm <laughs> ready. That's just that's good. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Tom Tom actually put something on Facebook that. That um, everyone can go and have a look at, and, and very, know, very hurtful. Wasn't I heard, it? Look, I, hurtful. I was cut to the bone, so I thought it was important that I acknowledge Tom in this show tonight. Are you going to say what he put on Facebook? No, no, no. I think everyone should go to Facebook and have a look. So go to the, go to our Facebook page, and are from the sidelines, and just have a look at how mean Tom was to the Rabbitohs. Yeah. Not to me, I can take it, but to the Rabbitohs. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the first game of the round, which was mm. Cronulla Sharks and St. George Illawarra at Southern Cross Group Stadium. Wow. I've got to say, I, what's wrong with Cronulla at the moment? Look, and, and I'm probably going to say this a couple of times tonight because there's a few teams that haven't won a game, but Cronulla mm. should be doing a lot better. You know, I, I, I have picked St. George to finish in my top eight, Steve, and yeah. I'm still going to stick by that, but they weren't good. Yep. They weren't good. They were they, they were good against the Broncos. Yep. They weren't so flash against the Sharks. It really is what's wrong with the Sharks. Well, um, you know what? They had a perfect first round, first half. First half, yeah. I think first it was, half was perfect. They did so well. I mean, and the d- defense of St George was superb. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Look, I mean, part of the part of the problem is, and I don't quite understand how it works, but Valentine Holmes at fullback. He played fullback all last year. Yep. And uh, the coach has basically said to him, mate, you've got first go at fullback. One bad game, and all of a sudden the team's all changed up, and I think Val had three touches and ran for 50 metres. Yep. Um, now, we all, we all discussed last week, he's probably the best winger in the game at the moment, on form, and that was, well, something extraordinary. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know what's wrong with the Sharks. They're clunky. Uh, they they can't put anything together. Uh, an interesting comment was made by one of the uh, so-called expert uh, commentators. Yes. That uh, Cronulla are playing exactly the same as they did last year with Maloney in the team. And so what they've got is uh, uh, Moylan's come into the team and they haven't changed any of their structure of play and so Moylan is expected to play as Maloney played last year. And you can't do that. You can't. And, and they're very different players. And, and Moylan's an exceptional player. And that was one question I had. Do the Sharks miss Maloney? 
Yes. Because I, I agree. I think they do. I yeah. think they badly need his... It's, it's almost his mongrel, isn't it? it it's, it's not so yeah. much his skill, but, but, you know, people didn't like McGannis because, of, because he was niggly. And, and Maloney is very much like that, but he gets... But there's, he gets the support from his teammates. But I'm saying that there is a lot of things wrong. Uh, Paul Gallen's an 80-minute player. Yep. Uh, go back 12 months and he was playing 80 minutes at State of Origin. Yep. He's starting on the bench and playing barely 50 minutes. Something is not right. Yep. I, I can't, can't really put my finger on it because on paper, that Cronulla team is basically the same team that won the comp last year. Exactly. Or the year before. Anyway. Let, me, let me ask a question. Um, at the end of it, um, right at the end of the game, mm-hmm. St. George got a penalty. Uh, we'd have kicked to t- for touch to end the game. Yep. Didn't kick for goal. Yep. Two points at the end of the season could make a huge difference about in the eight or out of the eight or top four or not top four. True. I, I was surprised. So was I. Yeah, absolutely. I-, I think you've just got to take points when they're on offer at the moment. At, at any point, yeah. Yeah. And But I tell you what, St. George, Barry, if you're watching, very impressive. Very impressive. Well, I don't know. I thought they were good. They were solid. I thought their but defense was superb. That and first half, that, that first half was it was there was blowing a gale, and yeah. uh, again the expert commentators at the game all said the sharks. This is a this is a ten plus point hmm. uh, wind, and we expect that there'll be some 40-20s kicked. St George put that much pressure on the sharks' attack. No forty twenties, yeah. and it was they were ten points up, yep. and and yeah, it was just. I actually thought it was. Yeah, a bit ridiculous. The the Dragons were exceptional in the first half and the Sharks were terrible in the second half. All right, let's move on to Allianz Stadium against uh, Roos- Sydney Roosters against the Canterbury Bulldogs. Now, Tom's not here. Tom's so not here. We only need to talk about this for two minutes then? That long? <laughs> but let me tell you what Tom would say. Tom would well, say that, yeah. that the Roosters were good without being superb, that they're still getting into their into their patterns, they're still getting into their, their um, mm-hmm. you know, the way they run the ball and, and Kronk's still trying to fit into the team. Yep. Um, it was a pretty impressive win though. And I, I didn't think the dogs were that bad. Oh, see, I didn't think they were that good. The dogs? Yeah. I thought, again, I thought they were, they were clunky in what they were trying to do. And uh, uh, they were in the game for a long time last year, last year, last week. Yep. Kieran Foran was running the ball a lot this time. Not so much. Oh, I don't know. I wasn't particularly impressed with the Dogs this week. Okay. Mind you, full credit to the Roosters. You can only play as well as the opposition lets you. Well, that's you. right. That's right. But no, no look, and, and I think I think Kronk is fitting in well. I mean, the difference to me was the fact that Luke Kiri was back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In saying that again, I would say that Blake Ferguson was up there with their best player on the park again. Yep. And... That's surprising. Two weeks in a row, Blake Ferguson's been exceptional. From the wing. From the wing, yeah. 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 But they were... Uh, the, my issue with the, the, the Roosters right now is that uh, last week they were their forwards were demolished by the Tigers, who were basically a no-name pack. The Bulldogs have a great pack, but they walked all over the Roosters as well. Yeah. Someone in that Roosters pack needs to stand up and you know put, some, put a stamp of, of authority on it. Because even Boyd Cordner was off. I got to say though, I thought the dogs forwards would dominate them, and and they didn't. Yeah. You know, with Woods and Clamour and, and Co, I, I was surprised that they didn't. But okay. Look, I, I you know, I I, th- I think the dogs have got some good wins coming up. I'm just not sure how soon. Yeah, absolutely. I just hope it's not against either of our teams. <laughs> yes, because we're going so great. Okay, let's move on to Suncorp Stadium where the Broncos beat North Queensland 24 to 20. Hmm. And I've got to say, I was very surprised by this result. Given, and, and I, again, it's only two weeks in, I get it, and given the way the Broncos played last week against St George and the way North Queensland have been playing, I, I, I'm surprised by the result. Oh, absolutely. This was... Uh at this point in the round, the upset of the round. <laughs> Mind oh. you, after this game, I'd still been, I'd only picked one winner. So. Oh, really? I'm on a roll. Oh, <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, in saying that, this game, this game lived up to the hype. It was, 
in the balance most of the game, you know, play for play, end to end, side to side, a good game of footy. But uh, interestingly, with despite the Cowboys and their star-studded lineup, they just didn't seem to grab the game. Yep. And I think that's what that's what we were all expecting. We we're expecting that North Queensland would grab it and run, but they didn't. No. And uh, I've been uh, I've been uh, on Wayne Bennett's back saying, "Come on, man, what are you doing there? You've you've lost a couple the of life. personal phone calls." I'm yeah, 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 yeah. But okay, Wayne, 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 mate, you know, I think you're losing it a bit here. Yeah. Uh, the changes he made to that team, uh, and you know, admitting, I guess through the ch- team changes that he's made some errors, just shows that he's not out of touch at all. And so, have, have you now rung him up and said, "Yeah, I apologise." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I've rung him up and apologised. Yeah, yeah. 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 Said, so, sorry, Wayne, I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean to harass you. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to say you were wrong, but although you've been in the business for 20 years and I've been in, what, for two weeks and a day? And, Excuse you know. me. So I've been watching this game since I was a kid. Playing a little bit, but watching. Really? Yeah, absolutely. But Manly only just came in a few years ago. Sorry. Okay, let's move on Are to you... Mount Smart Stadium. You're going to deserve everything you get in a minute. <laughs> you to take that down now. Actually, I, you know what? I think Tom looks really good in a in a in a um, South jersey. I, I think he should wear one more often. You're going to protect me when we see him again, aren't you? Nope. <laughs> I'm throwing you under the bus. <laughs> in that case, I might take him down in a minute. Okay, let's move on to Mount Smart Stadium, where the Warriors played the Gold Coast Titans, and the Warriors won twenty to eight. What I don't can know. you say? Well, is this the same Warriors team from last year? No. What are they doing? Look, you know, we, you, you, look for any serious rugby league fans out there. We know you can't pick the Warriors. Yeah. You, you pick them a bit during State of Origin because you expect them to jag a couple of wins. And this is the Titans team that uh, that came back from eighteen points down yep. to beat the Raiders last week. And the Warriors are notorious for starting off really poor at home in the start of the season. Yeah. 20 to 8? What? Well, I, you know... I mean, I look in, in saying that, it, despite all of that, I still picked the Warriors. But, yeah, so did I. But I did it expecting to that I, nothing would happen. But they had less possession, less... Less everything. Less... I'm just... I'm... I, <laughs> Warriors, what are you doing differently? They have Blake Green. And I know you don't want to hear that. Well, you know what? Just just so long as everyone out there is listening, uh, last week we asked you to comment on Blake Green and uh, his impact. No one did because he doesn't have an impact. No one did. Comment That's on our, on our, no, on our no, Facebook yeah, page. But, but that, doesn't mean he, he, that doesn't mean he doesn't have an impact. That just means no one has a clue what, how well he plays behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Please. You don't want your 5'8 to be behind the scenes. He, not everybody has to be the superstar at the front. He does what the job he did. And, and he did it with Manly last year and he's doing it with the Warriors this year. Uh, you, you know what the difference The difference with the Titans was? Ash Taylor didn't play. True. But I don't think they still would have won. Oh, geez, I don't know. I do I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say about the Warriors and the Titans were disappointing. All right, let's move on to Panthers Stadium. This one hurts. This oh, one hurts big time. Does it really? It does. Should I knock knock? <laughs> <laughs> no, you should not. <laughs> go, um, to, go to Facebook. Tom's put up some mean comments. Penrith Panthers beat South Sydney Rabbitohs 18-14. 14-0 at half time. South were on top of this game. Penrith were nowhere. South come out. Obviously, they look like they just want to defend the lead instead of playing the same game they were playing in the first half. Mm. And Penrith ran over the top of them. Five minutes to go, Penrith scored the winning try. But I don't know. Go, go, Steve. What's no, your, what's... I, I, I'm, I'm stunned. I, I gotta say, I'm very stunned by the result. I thought at 14 nil, I knew Penrith were always going to come back. Mm. I didn't expect them, but expect South not to score and Penrith to score 18 and win the game. I was very surprised because South were playing so well. 
I, I can't I can't help you I, I don't know except for I, I keep saying that uh, 12 points is not a big lead in rugby league at the moment and consistently teams are running down 14 18 points. 14 you points you, you not, can't play 14 points and think you're going to win the game. During the game, one of the commentators was asked, is 14 points enough? And they said, no, South will have to score, you have to get to 20, 24 points to win the game. And they were right. Yeah. They were right. 20 points would have won the game. But their attack just died in the second half. I don't know what it is. I don't... I, again, I don't think... Um, I, I, I just don't think that... Inglis had a quiet game. Up until he went off, he had a quiet game. Yep. Cody Walker was great in the first half, but very quiet in the second. Um, it just it just wasn't the way that South should be playing. But I've got something here I want to ask you about. Um, Phil Gould gave Adam Dowie's family 50 tickets for his debut game. Wow. Which I thought was really generous of him, and I thought it was great for the spirit of the game. Yep. For a young kid making his debut, and Phil Gould gives him 50 tickets for his family to come to the game. Yep. I thought that was very impressive. You know, Phil Gould has, uh, despite what you think of him, some people love him, some people hate him, I honestly think he has rugby league's best interests at heart. Oh, without doubt. Without uh, doubt. That, uh, he surprises me continually yeah. with the passion and the fire that he talks about uh, rugby league and rugby league players, uh, particularly uh, players that have left his club and gone on to other clubs. Yep. Uh, he was nothing but full of praise uh, for Matt Moylan, uh, Wade Graham, uh, all these guys, James Roberts. Yep. Uh, just full of praise for these guys that had been at Penrith, uh, had started there or been given an opportunity there and then have left. And let's face it, some of those players not under ideal circumstances. Yep. And just full of praise. It's He has the best interest of the game. Yeah, look, I don't doubt that at all. Don't doubt it. Listen, I want to ask you a question. A number of times it's happened this week, this weekend, where the refs are starting to pull up an obstru- obstruction rule where the ball is passed behind another player and it, and it doesn't go to the outside shoulder, it's either behind or the inside. I'm okay with the rule when it's close. But in some cases, it's four to six metres behind the play and it's mm. being pulled up. Yeah, look... I, I mean, there, there's no way the defence was anywhere near the, the, ball, the ball receiver in the first place. Are you talking about a specific incident? I am. I'm t- well, I'm talking about one here. In, yep. um, I think Penrith had a disallowed try because of it. Yep. Uh, I think the, in the Broncos-Cowboys game, I, there was a number of them this weekend. Yeah, but did they just pull them up after... You're going to have to refresh No, no, them, no. They, they, they look, the video... Ref, look, so it was after look, a try. After a try was scored. Interestingly, uh, I was watching the Manly Penrith game with Manly Penrith, Manly Parramatta game intensely. Yeah. And I noticed that Parramatta were doing the same thing, but because no try was scored, they were letting it go. They were letting it go. Yes. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Exactly. One way or the other. Are exactly. you going to pull it up? Or are you going to let it go? But if it's that far behind the play, I mean, if you're four meters away from the yep. defensive line, and then you go on to score the try. Is there yeah. really an obstruction because it was on the inside shoulder, not the outside shoulder? And in a lot of cases, behind the player, I, I think we're getting a little bit pedantic, is what I'm saying. I, I just yeah. think we need to be really careful um, that we don't get too pedantic. All right, not sure. Go. Wait, wait. What do we say about Penrith now? 18 points down against Parramatta, 14 points down against the Rabbits. Uh, are they the comeback kids? Um, when they play, oh. and, and no no disrespect to Parramatta or the Rabbits here, but when they play a team that's going to keep pushing, are they going to have the same effect? No, they, they won't do it against a team, a, a, dare I say, a better team. They won't do it against a Melbourne, they won't do it against a North Queensland, they won't do it against a Brisbane, they won't oh, do it against those. They might do it against Mount. Um, but no, I, I don't think they will. You're I, a I, harsh man. <laughs> and you can only do that so many times. I mean, yeah. every year one team does that. They 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 come back, come from behind. It happens for a few weeks. It'll come back to bite them. Mm. They have to play a full eighty minutes. Well, they have to learn how to play. I hope for their sake they do. But yeah. Okay, let's move on. To, look, I'm going to have to get rid of this. It's starting to hurt me now seeing Tom in a South jersey. So we'll just do that. 
Oh, that, that even hurts me more. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that's, that's the way it should be. Tom can, Tom can sit up here, all right? Oh, okay, okay. yeah. All right. Okay, um, Melbourne Storm at Amy Park against the West Tigers. The upset of the round, the West Tigers win 10-8. Melbourne were very, very poor. I've On got... Billy Slater's 300th game, Melbourne were extremely poor. I, I, I've got nothing. Seriously, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Do I? I, I don't, I don't understand. Melbourne started the year in the um, the World Club Challenge. Yep. And uh, absolutely, they put a number on uh, the English team. Yeah. Uh, their reserve grade team uh, went over to New Zealand at the same time and put a number on the Warriors. Yep. Uh, they struggled against the Bulldogs last week. I thought the Bulldogs were in the game for 60 minutes and yeah. just didn't have that little bit of whatever it takes to beat Melbourne. And I thought, well, this is it. Ah. Yeah. I mean... I get it. And, and Storm do those milestone moments well. They do the 50s, the 100s. Yes, they, the, do. The, they do those yeah. well. <clears throat> And from memory, this is the first big milestone game that they've not won. Yep. Like I remember, they've 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 won all the rest. Yeah. So, what is going on in Melbourne, or is it just the Tigers? Look, I, I did, don't forget the Tigers did this to the Roosters last week. I know they've knocked so, over the two teams of the <laughs> what. And at the beginning of the year, anyone would have picked a Melbourne Roosters grand final based on the on the squads they have. Steve, I picked the Tigers for the spoon. <laughs> Yes, you did. <laughs> what is going I mean, on? I, Ivan Cleary is is a master coach at this moment. He really is. The, he's just uh, just amazing. And and I you mean, know, I think for Billy Slater it was disappointing that they went down against the Tigers eight ten. Yep. You know, I I think he would have thought they would have played better for him. But oh anyway. look, I mean, in saying that, Tigers had sixty four percent percent possession. Yep. Uh, to thirty six and. But but thirty six percent for Melbourne is outrageously low. Yeah, absolutely. They're usually sitting at, at fifty to six, sixty five oh, yeah. to seventy. They sometimes. usually win yeah. the possession count. I just, I, I'm just, I'm stunned. I, I've, there's no words to describe Melbourne losing to the Tigers, and there's no words to describe the next game. Great segue. The next game. Oh, the yeah. next game. The next game was awesome. The, no, there Continue. Was no words. Listen, I'm just going to say. Manly Sea Eagles 54 to Parramatta Eels 0. Zip. Nada. Nothing. After, I think, about 10 minutes, Manly were ahead 18-0. And honestly, Parramatta had nothing. Not a thing. Go. I'm going to oh. let you have the floor. I don't know where to start, Steve. You could change your shirt to start with. No, I had to. I had to because this, that was just that was just phenomenal. Um, I I thought this was a danger game for for the Sea Eagles. I thought we could well be nil and two. Yep. At the start of I the, was hoping. Oh, see, hateful, hateful <laughs> people. Um, yeah, look, there's been a, there's been a lot made of it. Uh, Manly were exceptional. I yep. thought I thought they were on their game everywhere. Uh, meters made, offloads, tackles. Parramatta just could not get into the groove. No. They, and, um, you know, and I've been racking my brains trying to think why a team that is most people's pick for a yeah. top four position can't score against the Sea Eagles, who apparently were, were terrible, and most people pick them bottom four. Yeah. I, don't quite, I don't quite understand how this happened, to be honest. Um, he played a part. Um, yep. uh, I know that a lot of uh, Parramatta fans have been up in arms about uh, Jared Hayne. Oh, it's all Jared Hayne's fault. The team won't play, doesn't play well with him. You know what? Jared Hayne was absolutely schooled by Brian Kelly. Yeah. But it wasn't there. If just to have a look at this, Cherry Evans scored the opening try. Yep. And he had an exceptional game. Yep. Uh, that was that was. Player of the round material. Yep. But then, Appy Coruscant, Adam Fanoa Blake, Curtis Sirenin. Are we noticing something here? 
Uh, Jake Trevojevic, Curtis exactly. Siren, and Lloyd Perry. It all was all the up the middle. That's right. That is not Jared Haynes' fault, Parramatta. And, and that's why I think at the at, um, Cherry Evans kicked what eight out of nine or something. Nine like out of ten. Nine out of ten. <laughs> that's right. Because they were all in front. The only one that wasn't was the very last one. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, it, I'm sorry. Bit, bit disappointed, apparent... bit disappointed about Georgie because he could have gone in on that one, but yeah, he went well, out. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think you have to ask Cherry Evans how come he was kicking so badly because you know, <laughs> how did he miss that last one for goodness sake? But you know, it, it was just amazed, it just amazed me that Parramatta did not show up at all. Did not show. Up. They they just were not. No, there. no, absolutely. Um, there were a number of. of I mean, the, the stats say it all. Sixty nine percent possession. Yeah. Uh, 41 cent, uh, forty-one sets. Uh, Manly ran for 600 more metres. 11 line breaks to nil. Yeah. You know, it, they just... Parramatta just couldn't get into it. No, no, not at all. And I'm going to say, and, and, and I think... I hope the NRL are listening, that in that game yesterday, they decided not to have a drinks break. The temperature was getting upwards of 35, 40 degrees, and they decided... And, Come on, I, look, some, someone walked out in the field and did the temperatures and did this and compared this and mathematically came out with a mathematical equation that said they don't need it. I'm sorry, they do. It's not a problem for them to stop after 20 minutes. If both teams do it, who's losing? The team with the momentum. Uh, sorry. No, they, look, oh, you look. had the momentum. I mean, honestly, at that, look, at 20 minutes in, you were 24 nil anyway. Yeah. You were going to suffer by it. I don't. I don't know. I, I wasn't so. I wasn't so fussed about that. There was a lot of injury time, like nearly fifteen minutes injury time yeah. in the match. Yeah. Uh, so it was a bit stop start, um, which I think, I think probably lent itself uh, to assisting the players rather than not. Okay. Um, look, I said there. There are two things I don't understand. Gavin Badger pulled up Manly a dozen times. Oh, there have been a lot of a lot of penalties this weekend. It, but that but for ridiculous yeah. ridiculous penalties. There are a couple there where where he's he's pulled up Manly and called them offside, saying they, they went before, you know early in the ruck, and I'm just going, mm, I don't think so. Yeah. But there was one thing there that I thought he did really well. Uh, Manly were given a penalty. Mitchell Moses gave him a godful. Yep. Marched him ten meters. Mitchell. Moses gave him another godful, yep. and he binned him for 10. Yep. Thank goodness, thank goodness we had a ref that would stand up and, uh, and take it by the horns, because you, they can't. They can't continue to get walked on, uh, and I'm just sad that Manly only scored one try with him off. Well, there are 22 penalties scored in the South game, and there are 22 penalties scored in this game. Yep. They're, they're, they're blowing, and look... Uh, early, it's early in the, the round, so early in the year, so yeah. maybe that'll change. And, and I'm okay with them blowing if they're consistent. I get it. I yep. don't have a problem. All right, let's move on. Uh, well, you, do, you don't want to say anything about about how Lachlan Croker controlled that game and had a fantastic game? Because he'd be the 5'8 that, that is now No, playing what I will and, say is, is that if Blake Green was playing, you probably would have got to 70. Oh, don't, don't be silly. Okay. GAO <laughs> Stadium... Well, I've got this up here. This up here. You don't think I'm going to miss it? <laughs> GAO Stadium, um, Canberra Raiders went down, went down to the Knights, thirty to twenty-eight. Honestly, I picked two winners out of eight this weekend. I was going to pick the Knights and forgot to change my tip, so I don't know. I, I could say the Knights are impressive. The Knights, oh. Knights are playing well. Look, they're, they're they're doing enough to win. They're not impressive like a Roosters or a Melbourne. Or a Manly. But, well, it's easy when you don't have an opposition. But <laughs> You can only play as well as the opposition let you. True. <laughs> but at least they, you know, they're playing well. They're not giving up. You know, go back last mm. year, just last year, even when they got a lead, they, they lost at the end. Yeah. Even when they had a substantial lead. Now, not, not they're be- coming back. But not because they gave up. They they were beaten last year. They just didn't have that experience around them. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, let's face it, they beat Manly last week in, in Golden Point. Yep. Uh, they beat the Raiders here. When did they score in the last, the last two or three minutes, wasn't it? Yep. It was, you know, they're, they're in it. They're in it the whole and, game. And they're those, playing 80 minutes of football. Those players that they bought uh, to... Show the team how to get over the line. Yep. Are doing it. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Questions without okay. notice. No. 
I love I love it when Steve does this. Questions without notice. Tom. All the <laughs> Tom's not here to protect you. Tom. All, <laughs> all the way all, all last week leading up to Billy Slater's three hundredth game, mm-hmm. the Fox have been saying is Billy Slater the best fullback ever? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I think he's probably the best in his generation. But I would you know, I'd question whether he's as good as Graham Eady, Graham Langlands. Clive Churchill. I mean, mm. I, oh look, I, I I think he's a spectacular fullback. I think he's the best in the last. Well, see the thing is, years. well look, the the opposition fullback to Billy Slater would probably probably be don't kill me, uh, would probably be Brett Stewart for the majority of his career. Oh yeah, I wouldn't argue that. And and Brett Stewart was a brilliant fullback. Yeah, like, yeah. let me just tell you, as a Manly fan, we wouldn't swap him for anyone. No, that's right. If Brett Stewart had been playing in that Melbourne team, well, I think we'd be talking about him the same way. Yep. Yep. The The thing is, yeah, Billy Slater is the best, let's say he's the best fullback of his generation, yep. which I think is also debatable, but anyway. In that Melbourne team and that Queensland team, there is nothing he can do wrong. Yep. But that, that's the, the simple fact of the matter is he's playing in, in teams that are exceptionally good and he is a part of that yeah and i think that 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 puts a puts a, a shine on him that you know maybe you know shouldn't yeah. be, shouldn't be taken away but mind you, know. you clive churchill played in a superstar south team yep graham langlands was in the superstar st george team yep um i'm trying to think of a roosters fullback but i can't yeah um <laughs> so you know i i i I don't think you can be a superstar without the team. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, and and can I just say, I think uh, Cooper Cronk is probably proving that this year. Yeah. He's struggling at the Roosters, not because he's not a good, not a, yes, he's an Australian halfback. That's right. He's not a shabby player, but without the rest of that team around him, he's struggling to fit in. And it may take a couple of years. And does he have that? No. No, he's got two years. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay. All right, second question. Yep. During the week on our Facebook page, and our from the sidelines, um, a question was posted about uh, the stadium debate. Should the stadiums be knocked down and rebuilt, or should they be refurbished? Most people said they should be refurbished. Both you and I said we should knock them down yep. and start again. Yep. Because we need to think wider, just not just football. Yes. But we should be thinking concerts. We should be thinking a major stadium in Sydney will attract tourism and all sorts of stuff. Yep. Do you oh. have any more you want to say about that? Well, uh, the the thing is, uh, a lot of people are up in arms about the amount of money that it's going to cost to knock down these stadiums and rebuild them. Uh, I was listening to an interview with the uh, sports minister who was saying uh, the stadiums do not meet uh, current fire regulations. They don't meet uh, disabled access regulations. Uh, And to just get them ready for those two things, you're looking at uh, more than half, nearly three quarters of the amount of money that's been allocated to the knockdown rebuild. So anyone out there who's thinking it's a great big waste of money and thinks that they should refurb, you're wrong. Straight up, straight away, you're wrong. Because because we continually say our governments are short-sighted, our our leaders are short-sighted, they're actually showing foresight here. And you know what? I'm I'm a a proud Australian, I'm a proud Sydney cider. And you look at the stadiums that are in Brisbane, in Melbourne, now Perth, And we're going, hang on, Perth can do a better rectangular stadium <laughs> than New South Wales. I mean, come on, people. Yes, exactly. All okay, right. enough about that. I think that's, you know, we're right, they're wrong. How about that? Yeah, I think yeah, most right. people end up agreeing with us when we put it that way, though. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to next week, round three. Whoa, ladder. Ladder, please. Oh, you want the la- <laughs> ladder, please. Oh, you can do the ladder. In Tom's okay. place, you can do the ladder. Okay, I will say this. Number one position, the St. George Dragons. Number two... Are you going to do this the whole way through? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Number two, the Wobbly Warriors. Hey, leave them there. Come in second. Leave yeah, they'll be wobbly. Uh, Comeback Kids, the Penrith Panthers in third position. The unbelievable uh, West Tigers in fourth. Uh, followed by the Knights? 
Last year's Wooden Spoon is fifth. Now, that's the teams that have won all of their games so far this yes, year. Yes, it is. Uh, we then fall down to sixth. Uh, so the Mighty Sea Eagles, uh, the Roosters, then the Storm. That rounds out your top eight on for and against. Uh, Cowboys, Titans, Broncos have all also won a game. And winless, the Raiders, the Sharks, the Rabbitohs, the Bulldogs. <laughs> In the eels. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all. I just wanted to laugh at the eels. That's all. <laughs> okay. Let, let's see who's still going to be winless after the next round. Round mm. three. Starts out on Thursday night at Amy Park with Melbourne. Uh, sorry, yeah, Melbourne and North Queensland. Wow. You would normally say this is going to be a blockbuster. But Melbourne getting beaten by the Tigers last week. Mm. Gosh, yeah. you hope they don't play the same way or else... North Queensland have put 50 on it. Cowboys really off, though. I don't know. Yeah, well, they're Wow, two two teams really struggling for a bit of touch. Uh, Pick one. I'm gonna, you have to go the home team. Okay, Melbourne. I'd go yeah. Melbourne. Although I'd love to see the Cowboys get up. I just I just can't see it. Well, I, I, I can't see Melbourne putting on a poor f- performance again this week. Well, they've done two so far. No uh, no threes? No, I can't see it. I, th- I don't think Bellamy's going to let them do that. Bad things come in threes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I've got to go the Storm. I think okay. Tom will agree. Yep. Okay, um, ANZ on Friday night, Canterbury Bulldogs against the Penrith Panthers. Will the real dogs stand up or will the Panthers run over the top? I think this could be the dogs game. You think so? I don't know. I don't think the Pen- I don't think Penrith can come back a third time. Cool. So I think if if they're going to win this game, and, I, and I'd actually be backing him to win, um, I think they're going to have to do it from the get go. I don't think they're going to be able to do it from, from uh, the second half. You know what? I think the dogs the dogs are due. I thought they played they played reasonably well, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I hate to say it. Sorry, Brad, Dave, everyone else. I'm going to go the dogs. No, I think I've got to go Penrith this one. I just Maloney just is an incredible player, and I, I just think he's the driving force. Okay, um, and he's letting Nathan Cleary do what he should be do doing. What he's which doing, is yeah. Okay, let's move on to Campbelltown Stadium on Friday night as well. <laughs> West Tigers against the Broncos. Now, if the Tigers win this, are you going to suggest they're going to be a top eight team? They would have beaten Melbourne. The, or the Roosters, they've beaten Melbourne. Jeez, I tell you what, if they could beat the Broncos this time. No. The Broncos have really bad records, a really bad record at two grounds in Sydney. <laughs> Campbelltown and Parramatta Stadium. <laughs> and this is a Campbelltown. I, 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 look, I, 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 you know what, on form, you have to go Tigers. Yep. You have to. You have to. Might still pick the Broncos, but I have to go Tigers. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not sure that I can actually pick the Tigers to win this one, but you're right. I'm well, you couldn't pick in to beat the Roosters, and you couldn't pick in to beat Melbourne. No. no. But, you know, at the moment we pick them, they're going to lose. Mm, yeah, man, it's a good reason to pick the Broncos. Yeah. What do you reckon, Tom? I'm going to get on the fence and get some splinters, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom, you should be here. Okay, let's go to Saturday, GIO Stadium, Canberra Raiders and the Warriors. I'm sorry, it's the Warriors for me in this one. I shouldn't apologise. It is just the Warriors for me in this one. Look, the Raiders had some injuries coming out of that uh, game against Newcastle. And I think their depth is already tested. And I'm going to pick the Raiders. You're going to pick the Raiders? I can't pick the Warriors. Not again. Well, hang on. The Warriors are sitting in second spot, one yep. two games. Yep, yep. And I, I picked them last week. I'm not picking them two weeks in a row. Okay. All right. And, and I tell you what, Canberra need to win to be three down for the start of the season. Which is the next game too. Yes, thank you for reminding me. It's going to be tough to come back from. Yep. Now, this is why, this next game is why I was hoping that you lost on the weekend. <laughs> Why? Well, it would have been nice to at least have someone I could say, okay, this is at least a 0-2 for both of us. Mm. South Sydney Rabbitohs at ANZ Stadium against the Manly Sea Eagles at 5.30 on Saturday afternoon. You've got to be worried about that one. Oh, I know you're going to pick the bunnies, but you've got to be worried. 
Well, let me just say two things. You're not going to beat us 54 nil. <laughs> don't know. No, you're not. No, no. Okay. Not going to happen. We'll pretend we won't. Because at least South can score tries. And they've shown that in the last... Their defence is pretty average. But at least they've, they've shown they can score tries. I think South can... <laughs> I really want South to win, is what he wants to say. South will win this game. Note my face. South will win this game. That's all I got. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not in much doubt. Sorry. You going? Ooh, possibly, yes. I'd like to invite you, but I have members' tickets, and I will not let you sit in the members' area with that jersey on. I'll buy a new one. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, look, I, 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 this could be this could be a really tight game, yes. or, or it could be a, a blowout. And I hope it's not a blowout for your sake. Oh, me too. <laughs> oh, me too. Because okay. if that same Eagles t- team shows up, yeah. Because yeah. Anyway. All right. Let's go to ANZ Stadium. This is a double header. This is a double header. So 5.30 day in Z, and then the double header after that is Parramatta Eels against Cronulla Sharks. Jeez, if I even had an inkling for one of those teams. I don't... This is a hard game. It shouldn't be. Why? Well, we didn't... You'd no one beat Cronulla by 54 nil. Oh, there's no way Parramatta could be that bad again. No way could they be that bad. All right, let me let me ask you this: Every year, when a team gets beaten fifty-four nil or fifty-eight nil or something to nil, they get smashed. There's the bounce back factor. Then you've got to feel for the win this one? Yeah. Um, do you think Parramatta can bounce back? Do you think the coach can get the Parramatta players to respond to what happened against Manly? You know what I. I was watching the coaches at these games as well. Uh, Brad Arthur, both of the coaches, uh, mid-second half, went down to the sideline. Uh, Brad Arthur stayed there, went back with the team. Uh, I heard Corey Norman saying that uh, he was uh, very angry, but mostly controlled. Sharks coach, slipped my mind now, Shane Flanagan. Shane Flanagan, yeah. Uh, went down, had a very angry walk off, and uh, apparently he absolutely blew up the Lux. Yeah. Um, I think, with that in mind, I'll be leaning towards Parramatta. Okay. Interesting. All right. I don't, I don't mind you. I don't know. I mean, and let's face it, something's wrong with the Sharks. Yeah. All right. Let's move to Clive. Well, uh, Steve, you? Uh, I actually think I'm going to go Sharks. I don't think Parramatta can bounce back. I'm, although, you know, what What do I know? I'm, I'm so far down the tipping ladder. It's irrelevant. <laughs> At Clive Berghofer Stadium, and I'm just not sure where that uh, is. That's in uh, North uh, Cairns. Cairns, okay. Clive Berghofer Stadium. Gold Coast Titans against St. George Illawarra. I'll tell you what, it's a Sunday afternoon game. It could be mighty hot in Cairns. I'm going Dragons. Yeah, I'm going Dragons as well. I, I, you know, in saying that, if that was on the Gold Coast, I would I would give the Titans a bit of a chance. But the Dragons are just good. They're, you know, Jack DeBellin, Tyson Frizzell, yep. just, wow, what monsters. All right, let's end it up with a- Allianz Stadium, Sydney Roosters against the Newcastle Knights. Mitchell Pearce comes home. I tell you what, the Roosters have, you know, what, 400 members. Probably, about, <laughs> probably add on another 150 supporters. So they'll, they'll have about 550, maybe 600 people there. The Knights should be able to get thousands of people down there and turn this into a home game at Allianz Stadium. This is what happens when you're not here, Tom. (laughs) No, I would have said that if Tom was here. They have nobody. You know what? Tom, you're going to hate this. I'm going the Knights. Wow, are you? Okay. I am. All right. I am going the Knights. I I think they'll hang in and hang in and hang in. Yep. 
And at the moment, they're hanging in and winning. Okay. What do you think Tom's going to do? Uh, Tom will also go the Tom, Knights Tom because will, he's... Because uh, Mitchell Pearce. Because of Mitchell Pearce. Aiden Guerrero. Connor Watson. Connor Watson. Yeah. Or, Tom will... Okay. Yeah, so this is, this is the Roosters versus the Roosters. So okay, Tom's so, a bit confused. No, I think that's fair. Red, white, and blue. Red, I, white, and blue. I think everyone <laughs> looking out there, this will be Tom's pick. Tom will go the Knights. Um, I'm actually going to go the Roosters because... I, <laughs> After all that. After all that. No, I actually think the Roosters are going to win this, but I think it'll be a great game to watch. I think Mitchell mm-hmm. Pearce coming home, it's going, to, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and Well, a, a number of Roosters coming home. To yep. roost. So Indeed. Speak. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to end the show with? Oh, look, only that um, only that uh, that little bit of glimmer for Parramatta fans out there. I want to give them this bit of glimmer. In the entire competition since its inception... No team has ever lost by 50 points and gone on to win the comp. See you next year. <laughs> Do you know many friends who are Paramount of I've got heaps of them. I've been giving them grief. Oh, dear. All right. Go on to our Facebook page, NRL from the sidelines, and post any comments you want. Tell us we're right. Tell us we're wrong. Generally, just tell us we're right. Um, if you want to make any comments about anything else, please do so. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next week. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from Brian. Yeah. And so yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye from Tom. Goodbye from Tom. <laughs> bye bye.